in October of 1979, Dr. Cecilia Stone and Richard Johnson went on a two-week expedition to the Banksy Forest region of the eastern United States to study birds. After three weeks, when they hadn't returned yet, their university contacted the proper authorities. What we discovered was disturbing. Their campsite was in complete disarray, as if someone had left very quickly. Their supplies were thrown about, scientific samples and equipment left out open to the elements. There are large predators in those woods, so at first we assumed that they had been chased out by a bear or a mountain lion, but their remains told a different story. Dr. Richard Johnson's body wasn't found till almost a year later, hidden in a cave. It had been scavenged by woodland ant creatures and the passage of time made it impossible to discern the cause of death. Our working theory has always been that he killed Dr. Stone and then hid before killing himself. But Dr. Stone's body, found a few days after they went missing, told a different story. She had been murdered. The cuts to her throat were clean, the kind you only get from a knife. Necklaces and earrings were missing from her body, and her wedding ring, missing as well, along with her ring finger. Clearly the work of a madman. Certainly Dr. Johnson. I know there have always been theories about some sort of ghost in Banksy Forest, but as we have been telling the public for over 40 years, there is absolutely nothing to worry about. The death of Dr. Cecilia Stone was certainly a tragedy, but it was an isolated incident. The residents of the surrounding area can rest assured it was the work of Dr. Richard Johnson, nothing more, nothing less. My name is Ellie Kowalski, and I don't think that Richard Johnson killed Sussie Stone. So um, I spent a night in town before I started my expedition, and it seemed like everywhere I went, everybody I, I ran into wanted to talk about the Banksy forest ghost or whatever it is they called it. I wasn't even born yet when those scientists got killed, but my entire life I've been hearing about the ghost. Um, like when I was little, my mom, she would never let me play anywhere near that forest. Um, so now that I'm grown, I just kind of steer clear of it. Like, I don't know if I believe in any ghost, but like, could not pay me to spend a night in that forest. I didn't really pay much attention to the local legends. I mean, every forest has got a story. And yeah, I knew about Stone and Johnson, but it was just sort of a thing that happened. Terrible tragedy, yeah, but not really anything I had to be concerned about. It wasn't until I had my first incident with the creature that I started to get worried. So it was late on the second night of my expedition. I didn't really set up camp. I just was in a sleeping bag on the forest floor. I just didn't really feel like setting up a tent, but um, everything was going fine until I woke up kind of suddenly. It was the middle of the night. I really don't know what it was that made me wake up. I just kind of felt uneasy. And um, I didn't really know why until I heard the screaming. Um, it was just kind of coming from the treetops all around me. It sounded kind of like a bird call, but it wasn't quite. And besides, it didn't sound like any birds that were in the area. And um, it sounded a little bit too much like someone screaming. Um, yeah. Honestly, when I first heard it, I was excited. I knew there was nothing in those woods that should be making that sound that we knew of, which meant that I must have just discovered a new species. Um, I stumbled across their campsite by accident, I was just kind of going around collecting my samples and everything. And uh, on the fourth day of my expedition, I came across some bundles of canvas, some like firewood, some boxes that were similar to the ones that I use to transport things like feathers. And it didn't take me too long to figure out that I had stumbled across something historic. I wasn't going to stay. I mean, I didn't really have any reason to, but that was when I found the feather. It was the biggest feather I had ever seen, and I've studied birds all over the globe. I mean, I have a PhD in ornithology. 
So considering those noises that I heard the night before, I was fascinated. Um, so I picked it up and I realized that the size was not the only unusual thing about this feather. I mean, um, I feel like most people know most feathers are soft. This one cut me when I picked it up. So once I picked the feather up, um, I also noticed the tip of it. Um, it, was, it was really strange. Most feathers have a keratin base. This one was pretty clearly made of bone. So that kind of indicated a much sturdier animal than like what you typically see in a bird. I tucked the feather away and decided to look around the area for more. And it was while I was looking for more feathers that I found the camera. Put the camera down. Come on, Sessy, tell the camera what we're doing. Pitchy, I'm driving. Come on. It's October 19th, 1979. Uh, we're about an hour away from Banksy, and when we get there, we're Tell the camera your name. I'm Dr. Cecilia Stone, and uh, behind the camera is Dr. Richard Johnson. 